Hello and welcome to another episode of how to build a compiler with LLVM and MLIR. I hope you're having a great time wherever you are. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about lowering SLIR. As an overview of what we did up until now, um, we created a compiler that reads the source code of a kind of a Lisp like language, creates an AST out of that source code. It runs some semantic analysis on uh, the AST uh, and rewrite the AST to be a semantically correct uh, AST. Uh, we like make sure that uh, by the sem like the purpose of semantic analyzer is to make sure that we have a correct semantic that the source code, the input code is semantically correct. And then uh, we define the new dialect of MLIR called SLIR, Serene's, Serene Language Intermediate Representation, um, which has like two, three uh, operations, not a fancy one. Uh, we might end up uh, rewrite, like creating a new dialect in the future, like a real dialect. And then we use the SLIR to generate some uh, IR, some form of IR. And that was by the end of uh, episode number nine. In the episode number 10, we had a, like a quick overview of the pass infrastructure of MLIR and LLVM. Uh, we looked at what is a pass, how to define a new pass, uh, what is the purpose of uh, the pass infrastructure in general how to create a pipeline of passes using the pass manager and things like that. In today's episode, we're going to use whatever we learned in episode number 10 to lower SLIR to other dialects of LLVM, especially LLVM IR. But uh, talking about lo uh, lowering, what is it? Like what is dialect lowering and why we want to do it? So basically, as we discussed earlier in uh, previous episodes, MLIR, uh, like we can create our own dialect in MLIR. Each dialect might be specialized in doing something. Um, and there's like a, list, a long list of built-in dialects or there's like tons of dialects made by other people. Uh, the nice thing about ML, MLIR is that we can take advantage of other dialects at the same time and use them in our advantage. For example, right now we have SLIR. We can actually, so the target, the target goal for us is to transform SLIR to LLVMIR. To the LL, and then feed the LLVM IR to the backend, to the LLVM backend and generate some object files or basically compile it to some target code. Um, that's the like an end goal for us, but it's not going to be a direct transition to the LLVM IR. We have to either directly or indirectly uh, tra transform the SLIR to other forms and eventually to LLVMIR. And that's what lowering means. So it's just an example, but we can actually transform and translate SLIR to, let's say, I don't know, like blah dialect, right? That blah di direct, uh, dialect might, might be defined by some other people somewhere uh, we, we have to like add it to our project, load it like I'm going to show you how, but uh, load it before uh, we like our um, basically the, we, when we want to use the pass infrastructure, we have to make sure that we already loaded that dialect and then we can transform operations of SLIR into that like foreign dialect and then probably they have some rules to transform that blood dialect to other dialects and eventually to LLVMIR. But each dialect usually uh, has a goal. You know, for example, our own dialect, SLIR's goal would be to map directly to our AST. So we would create a graph of our, like which each node in that graph is an operation and then we map the AST to our own SLIR and then we 
we can use the past infrastructure to do some optimization decide like uh, what to do with the IR how the program looks like in our IR and then uh, create trans translate that IR into uh, LLVM IR so there's a dialect in MLIR called LLVM dialect. That's like the end goal for us. We can actually uh, directly translate SLIR to LLVM IR, but it's easier to convert to that dialect because there's uh, like it's already made and MLIR engineers already uh, created that for us. And so why not? Let's use that one um and in today's episode like the code that i'm going to show you uh the actual process is we trans uh, transform slir into a standard dialect and then a standard dialect to llvm ir dialect so we jump twice to get to llvm ir but in in order to do that um MLIR actually provides uh, some tooling and some like library, not, not library, a framework to help us to achieve our goals in that area. So basically, there's a framework called dialect conversion. Uh, conversion. Um, it's something on top of the pass infrastructure, so we have to use pass infrastructure, but the dialect conversion is like easier way to tr transform or translate our dialect to another one it has like three um not sections like in order to use it we have to do three things or two mandatory things and one optional one first we need to do target conversion it means like we want like in order to transform slir to a standard dialect that a standard dialect would be our target we might choose to do choose to do like multiple transformation or translation for example uh, translate slir to std dialect or to like scf dialect or something like that right or to async dialect at the same time some of the operations would be translating to will be translated to uh a standard operation some of them will be translated to async operations and basically we can have a mixture um, the second thing is we need to have a rewrite pattern i'm going to talk about them when we uh, get to the code and finally we need we might need a type converter it's an it's an optional process since we don't have a type yet we're not going to use it but if we decide not like decide in the future we will have our own types so at that time we need to have the type converter as well what it does is uh, since our types would be kind of uh, slir only they will be part of the slir they like we want to let mlir knows how to how to translate our type to a type in another dialect and finally, uh, there's a concept of uh, uh, full car conversion uh, versus partial conversion. So a full conversion is when we translate the entire dialect into other forms of dialect and LLVM IR, LLVM dialect finally. But partial conversion is like, we know that we want to kind of hold off on translating some of the operations and leave it to other passes so we just partially uh, translate some of the operations that we have in just one pass and leave the rest to other passes so um, to begin with uh, let's have a look at the namespace code du, du, du. okay Where was it? So we had a generate. Yeah. So we looked at the generate function in episode nine. Just a quick overview. We create a build there and then we create an LLVM MLIR module, which is like an operation on its own module 
uh, OP, and then we walk the AST and call the generate IR uh, member function on each AST node, passing the uh, namespace itself and the newly created module. So each node will generate some IR and attach it to the module. So by the end of this for loop here, we, like our module would be populated with some operations uh, related to the AST nodes. And then we verify the generated IR. We want to make sure that they're semantically correct. If there was a failure, we're going to raise an error and uh, basically return. Otherwise, we are going to run some passes. So this is where we want to do uh, lowering, basically, in our uh, using our pass manager. So here, if the pass manager failed, if any of the passes fail to process the IR, we're going to raise a sorry, raise an error and delete the module and return. Sorry. So one thing to uh, kind of uh, as a heads up, you might think that, okay, this error message is not useful enough. Uh, how can I figure out what's wrong and what failed in the, what has failed in the pass pipeline? So in, as I'm going to show you in each path, if there's a failure, that pass itself is going to emit an error. So uh, what we kind of end up, uh, what we end up with is a kind of a stack of errors in our uh, diagnos uh, diagnostic engine. Uh, we have to like, we're going to leave the uh, error processing for now to the diagnostic engine. We're going to have an episode about it, but basically it would be like, if you have a, if you ever worked with a C++ C or C++ compiler, which probably you did, uh, you know that when you, when you get an error, you'll see errors like on top of each other as a, like a kind of a stack like uh, error messages, but Basically, each pass will emit its own errors, and at the end, we just emit another one uh, after we ran the entire pipeline. So let's look at the uh, run passes member function. All it does is to call the run function of the pass manager. We saw that in the episode number 10, it's just a, like a public API. We pass the module to the run function of the pass manager. This PM here, which is defined in our uh, context, is our main pipeline. For now, it's fine, but I'm pretty sure in the future we have to change it because we have to have different pipelines for different purposes. But for now, this is fine because as you already know, we want to have a minimal compiler. We we we're, uh, we want to actually have the wiring first, and then we're going to build uh, like a more sophisticated compiler later. Okay, but uh, in order to know what type like what passes do we have in that pipeline, we have to look at the context. Um, actually, okay. Oh, by the way, um, we already talked about this, but we have to make sure that we uh, load all the dialects that we want before we do anything. So right now, in the current version of the compiler, we use the Serene dialect, which is SLIR, and the standard dialect, which is built in, uh, which is a built-in dialect in MLIR. Um, and then, ooh, sorry, context.cpp. Uh, where was it? Um, can't remember where, where I, you, oh, here. So we, ha we have a member function in our context, which is set operation phase. Basically, 
uh, depends on the parameters that we pass to the compiler. We set different passes. Uh, we add different passes to the pass manager. This thing, like the way I did it, kind of makes sense for now. But the truth is, for different uh, like phases, we need different pipelines. So, for example, if we wanted to just generate some like LLVM IR, we would have one pass that one pass manager, sorry, that has all the passes uh, we need to gen translate to LLVM IR. Or if we want to generate uh, like a target code, then we ha have to have another pa uh, pass manager with all the passes uh, for that purpose. Uh, but for now, it's fine. I'm pretty sure I'm going to change it in the future. So depends on the compilation phase. If we want to generate SLIR, we don't need a pass manager because we directly generate SLIR out of our AST without running any pass on it, so it's fine. If we want to generate some uh, MLIR code, I, I the name I chose here is kind of not good MLIR, but it's kind of, it means after translating SLIR to any other dialect of MLIR. That's why I chose MLIR, but basically it would be like a standard dialect. So, here I added a pass called create SLIR lower to MLIR pass. Weird, I know, but uh, anyway. And if the compilation phase uh, is LIR, I mean like lowered IR, which means by this point, we have to have everything lowered to LLVM dialect, not LLVM IR, LLVM dialect. We, I, I added a new pass. So since uh, basically since uh, these phases are ordered, if we have if our current phase is L LIR, then we have both passes in our pass manager. So let's have a look at them. They uh, they're defined in. The, actually, let me show you. Let me show you like that. They're defined in a header file called uh, passes. So as you can see, both of them return a unique pointer to a MLIR pass. And then one of them, which is the first one, create SLIR lower to MLIR pass, is defined in a file called, uh, in, a implement in an implementation file called SLIR lowering in the passes directory in libserine like i have to kind of uh, talk about the libserine a little bit here so in the previous episode i mentioned that i made some changes to the cmake uh, cmake files and the build pipeline so libserine is a object uh, library from now on but i ended up um, like changing that again um the reason is because at first I, I had this mentality that let's have just one binary as the compiler and let's build everything in it as it turns out that might not be a good idea i don't know why i uh, i thought like that but the truth is to be true to the unix philosophy and to have like, we should have a smaller tools that they do one thing really good. So right now, since I'm working on the JIT, I had to, to create a, like a, a REPL environment. So I created serene-REPL binary. Uh, I'm working on that. It's, uh, I'm, I have to work on it for a long time. But, uh, so we have serene C, we have uh, serene-REPL. If I wanted to use libserin as a object, as an object library, it meant that I have to link uh, the object files in both binaries. I would have ended up with uh, like a giant binaries at the end. So I decided to uh, change that. So by default, libserin would be a shared library right now. Like there's a flag for any uh, 
distribution maintainer if they want to change it to a static library or whatever. But for now, by default, it's a shared library. And I link that, dyna I dynamically link that against both binaries. Um, that wasn't related to our uh, episode today, but uh, you needed to know about that. So going back to the topic, um so here's the function that uh we use to add the pass to uh, to our pass manager it creates a unique pointer out of a class called slir to mlir pass so this thing is a class in the same file as as we discussed in the previous episode as you can see this is just a uh, pass you know and if you remember, we had like two types of passes. Uh, this one is operation specific pass, and it works only on module operations of L MLIR, obviously. So if you remember again, everything has to happen in the run on operation member function. So uh, first of all, we need to kind of tell MLIR what uh, other dialects uh, we want to use in our pass or what other dialects we are depends on we are depend on in our case it's a standard dialect if we if there's another dialect we just can pass it as like a te template argument here but for now we have only standard dialect and then uh, obviously get module is just a wrapper for get operation since our pass works only on uh, module operations so get operation is going to return on uh, return a module anyway and finally run operation would call run module oh by the way the basis of not the basis even this code is based on the mlirs uh, tutorial code for uh, lowering irs I, I just had to make some changes, uh, especially on the rewrite patterns. But it's based on uh, uh, that code, basically. So in the run on module member function, the magic happens here. We get the module that we try to translate. We create a conversion target, um, and we have to pass the context to it. The get context will return the MLIR context in this case. Then, oh, here's the important uh, part. So all the passes that we want to, the act, uh, all the passes that we actually create to transform SLIR to other dialects, to other targets, are normal passes. But since we're going to use the conversion framework, there's, there's a concept you need to know. So, we have a tar we have a target which is in our case a standard dialect and our source dialect is SLIR obviously. SLIR has a set of uh, operations. If we want to do a partial conversion, we're going to say okay from the list of operations that SLIR has, let's say three operations operation number one, two, three. We can mark some of them as legal, which means if you mark an operation as a legal operation, it tells the uh, pass manager that if I didn't provide any uh, rewrite pattern for that operation, it's fine, it's legal. You can uh, forget about it. Don't yell at me if I didn't convert that thing, that operation into other operations of that target. But if we mark uh, any uh, operation or any dialect as illegal dialect or operation, it means if I didn't, it, it asks MLIR basically that if I didn't provide any rewrite pattern for that operation and if I failed to translate that into an operation in the target dialect, fail the pass and basically that's how we keep track of what we already translated to 
the target dialog and what we didn't right so here we mark uh, a standard dialog as a legal dialog it, it means like all the operations in that dialog is legal to this path so when we generate some operation uh, operation from uh, a standard dialog current path and the path manager would be okay with it it would be a legal operation and we marked a uh, serene dialect as illegal dialect so anything in the serene dialect which is slir is considered as um, illegal operation uh, yeah considered as illegal so we have to transform that into legal operations which is standard dialect operations only uh, we can actually um, mark operations uh, as legal or illegal like this. We don't have to do only based of the dialect at, uh, at dialect level. I wanted to create a, like a print dialect uh, before because like that was how MLIR's tutorial actually uh, progressed, but I didn't do it. Basically, in if you follow the tutorial, you'll know that there's a print operation, and the, since they're going to uh, lower that operation in another pass, they mark it as a legal operation here. It means that if I didn't again, if I didn't translate this thing, uh, the print operation into a standard dialect operation, it's fine. But since we don't have that, I just commented out. And this is like. Up until now, we generated a target, we defined a target, and we marked some dialect as illegal and illegal alongside with some operations. And here's where we define the rewrite patterns. What is a rewrite pattern? We're going to see in a bit, but we have to add patterns to our rewrite pattern set, right? Basically, it's like run these rewrite patterns are on my dialect on my um, not on my dialect sorry on my operation which in our case right now is the module and by the end of all these uh, rewrites we have to have a new dialect mm, that's that's a little bit incorrect so by the end of the when we apply all these rewrites into the module operation we would have like we would transfer, we should have transferred the transform, sorry, transform the SLIR operations into a standard operation and legalize uh, the illegal SLIR dialect into a legal dialect, which is a standard uh, dialect in our case. Uh, that's how uh, we're going to do it. And finally, we apply the partial conversion here. We do partial conversion because, for example, if we had a, like a print operation or any other operation that we wanted to do it in another pass, we would have marked it as legal here. We we might not have uh, we, like basically this pass is not about translating everything into LLVM dialect. That's why why we we're doing the partial uh, conversion. And if it fails, we signal a pass failure. This, this uh, function signal pass failure is how we let the pass manager know that this pass is failed. So right now we have to look at these two uh, uh, rewrite patterns. One is to lower the value operation and the other one to lower the function op uh, operation. Let's start by value. So um, same file again. Basically, it's a struct that inherits from a class called op rewrite pattern. We have to pass the concrete type as well here. It just has one function that returns a logical result. Logical result, it's a type in MLIR, which is like success or failure. Um, the function is match and rewrite. So it's like it at the first stage, it has a pattern to match against, right? So in our module operation, 
we kind of walk through whatever operation is in that module operation and we try to match against a pattern in this case since we uh, we use the op rewrite pattern it's it's basically it's like match against a specific operation in our, in our case that operation is sorry is value operation uh, I, uh, I by mistake i mentioned that we have to pass the concrete type here it's not the concrete type that we're creating it's just the operation uh, class that we want to actually match against so this rewrite pattern will run on all the value operations and then rewrite the value operation to something else let's have a look at the implementation so since we know we're going to rewrite a value operation and that's our pattern we kind of we're sure that we're going to get a value operation as a as an input to this function and then we have a rewriter pattern rewriter is exactly not exactly it's really similar to a builder object like an op builder from mlir the difference is uh, it rewrites the operation that we match against so what we do here is quite simple if you if you remember the value operation has had an attribute called value that's how we get that value it uh, it should be like a in 64 or something i can't remember i64 value um, and then we get the location of the operation again if you remember location referred to the place in the source code that uh, this value is coming from finally i'm creating a, like i'm wrapping that value uh in in a like a function and then uh where is it and use uh, like i'm using a standard operation called uh, constant int operation this operation here let me highlight it for you this operation here is from a standard dialect but why am i uh, actually creating a function here so apparently uh, on the top level of a module we can't define like we can't have a, a normal um, operation like constant int so only global symbols are allowed in the uh, top level uh, of top level of a module operation so that's why i had to uh, wrap it in a function uh, basically a function that a constant function that returns the value directly this is a nasty implementation it works for now but in the future obviously we need to uh, change this behavior but why i wrapped it in a function because since we have a lisp uh, it definitely possible that someone in the rep might just put number three enter number three and uh, decided to evaluate number three that number three would be on the top level of our module so we have to provide the functionality to the user so that's why i wrapped it in a function called random name i have a to do which is like generate a unique name here uh, for now it's fine so what happens is we wrap it in a function and call it in place and use the return value as the result of the evaluation so that's uh that's that's the plan the way we do it is we create a like a, a small vector a small vector is like a vector like object in llvm which is like really uh optimal it's a, like an optimized vector you can think of it like that uh you have to look into the llvm programmers manual to read about it this number one here is like allocate only one slot of type uh, mlir type that's it so this is like we have a, a small uh, we have a vector of mlir types which is empty um like we don't have any input type and we created a, a function type which basically is like input types of a function and the return type since we only have i64 type like we support at the moment only i64 that's what our function is going to return we don't have to do uh, like magical stuff to figure out what type of uh, what type actually this function is going to return so i64 for now 
and then we use the rewriter to create a function operation the function operation is part of standard dialog we pass the look uh, we pass the location the location should be the same so wherever the value operation is defined that would be the place that function operation is going to define as well again it might be a little bit vague but location refers to the source code to the like input source code so whatever expression that caused uh, the creation of value operation would be the same as this uh, we, the same location that we use for this function and this way we create a function if the function uh, was nil do i need to check this no so here's the mistake i made i don't know why uh, basically since this create function doesn't return a pointer apparently it doesn't return a pointer does it no doesn't return a pointer since it doesn't return a pointer i shouldn't really check this thing so if i remove this it should be fine right let's do it anyway i have to make sure but we don't i don't need to check that that was a mistake well i don't know why i uh, did that when we create a function actually it uh, now i uh, i'm a little bit confused there might be a reason why i did that I can't remember why, but I have to check. Uh, it shouldn't be null because it, it doesn't return a pointer. Anyway, I have to check. Uh, I have to check that. But when we created a function, we need to add an entry block. Entry block basically is where the body lives, right? It's the body of the function. We create an entry block. It returns like a block up object, and then we ask the rewriter object start writing uh in the entry block basically set insert point uh insertion point to the start of entry block it means if you remember since rewriter is like the builder it has a like a cursor when we create some operation it creates the operation in that position and moves the position forward moves that uh, cursor forward by doing this it means like if you're here move to a start of that block and start adding operation operations there uh, and we create just since it's it's going to be a constant function we create a new constant int operation it's uh, like a built-in um, operation in a standard dialog we pass the location again uh, we know the value has to be in 64 because we have just one type and here's the type of the value that we want we have to pass to constant in and then we get result on it uh, the get result is directly it's like do this operation store the result into um, value and get me that value so if uh, let me see let me let me let me see do we have return now let me show you what i mean um so if i do okay mm, let's do Malaya. so if you so basically what happened like we, we're creating this thing in here right so the constant int operation prints like this uh, number three in 64 is the type and the location is on location one which is in this file this line this column blah 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 but that get result gives us this thing in here like the value the ssa form of the entire f uh, function entire operation right so when we do uh, this in here like create an operation we're doing oops we're doing this thing right and when we say get result we get this value name here right we get the value of that thing and we pass it to the return um, operation return on its own um, here we define the return return is another operation in a standard uh, dialog we pass that name we got like a say form that we got from const int operation and you uh, create a return operation uh, out of it again i don't have to do this i 
don't know for some reason probably in my head while i was uh, creating this thing i thought oh now i know yeah so it was just to shut up the linter probably i thought that it returned the pointer i like i used to do there sorry something like that i thought it's going to return a pointer so i was actually checking that uh, checking that uh, the return operation is not null but since it doesn't return a pointer i don't have to check that and if i want to make sure uh, that my linter is going to leave me alone i can just do um used macro in here on oh i use it yeah no. so this is a macro i define inserting that h it just like ignores the uh, ignores the um, linter rule basically it's like i'm using it leave me alone let me add that in here i forgot to do it okay very very cool so when we get here when we get here it's like we already generated the function the only step re remaining is to set the function as private we don't want other module to be modules to be able to import and use this function because basically it's a wrapper it's like a hack we use to uh represent constant values and at the end we have to erase the old operation which was illegal so we marked cell ir dialect as uh, as an uh, illegal dialect so every operation in that dialect would be considered as illegal. If we leave the value operation around and don't delete it, uh, MLIR will throw an error of saying that, okay, you have a illegal operation in your IR after this pass, it shouldn't happen. So that's why we erase that here. You, I made a mistake here before, so just to share my experience, I did something like this, uh, erase, right? I, I did something like this. Apparently, you shouldn't do it. Uh, I don't remember why, to be honest, but you have to use rewriter to erase an operation all the time in the uh, rewrite patterns. And finally, we return success uh, to mark uh, this operation as successful. Uh, I know uh, I have to remove this thing, but to show you how a pass might return um, like emit an error basically it's like on this operation which is a value error emit an operation error with this message in here and return failure the rewrite pattern will fail if return uh, rewrite pattern fails it causes the pass to fail if the pass fail the pass manager will fail and it's kind of like bubble up to the surface that's how we uh, like mar uh, mark failures but since it's not a pointer, I don't have to do this. And the other um, operation rewrite we had, like a rewrite uh, we had was for function lowering. Again, another OP rewrite pattern. We, we define, like we uh, describe FN OP, like FN fun, uh, operation of SLIR to be the uh, pattern we want to match against. And then in the match and rewrite function, obviously we're going to have a FN operation. Um, and same thing as before, we get the arguments list of the function, right? It, it should be a, yeah, it's a dictionary attribute. Uh, basically this args here is a dictionary attribute. If you remember from episode number nine, uh, we define the function operation to have some attributes and uh, like to for the input arguments to be a dictionary attribute right name type name type you can uh, review it like look back into uh, episode number uh, nine to see it right and actually we can see it uh, here as well so as you can see 
um, this function here, right? It had like this is the dictionary. This this one actually. This is the dictionary input for uh, this function in here, and this one is the same for this function in here. As you can see, it says there's an argument called name type i64, another argument called v type i64, and vice versa. So by by doing this, we're getting that dictionary uh, attribute and put it in args variable. Another um, attribute we had was the name of the function, put it in name, and the symbol visibility, which is either public or uh, private. Um, yeah, uh, I did, uh, it's like, is it a public function or a private function? And finally, get the location uh, like, like before, put it in a, a lock variable. So um, we're going to create a, a standard dialog function just like we did in the previous uh, rewrite pattern. This time we want to allocate at least four slots uh, with allocation of our um, small vector. Um, if you want to know more about like this thing in here, just look at the LLVM programmer's manual. It's, be it's best to read it there. Um, and then, we kind of loop through all the arguments that we have. We dynamically cast the value. This is like, uh, since arg is a dictionary value, if we want to get the value part, not the key part, we have to use std get, which is like, yeah, in this pair, get the second uh, thing, not the first one. Um, and then we try to dynamically cast it into a type attribute. What it means is we get this one. So we loop over pairs, right? Like this, every time we loop over a pair. So this thing in here, the arc here should be a pair. Yeah, as you can see on the top right corner, it's a pair. The first element is a, uh, is an ML, is a MLIR identifier. And the second one is another attribute. That attribute should be a type attribute. So it should be an attribute describing a type. We try to dynamically cast it to that type attribute. If it wasn't a type attribute, we have to fail because it there's an error there. We expect a type there. So that's how we um, emit an error and then fail the rewrite pass. But if it was a type attribute, get the value of it, which basically means get give me the type since it's a type attribute. If it was a, like, a, I don't know, like a string attribute, for example, I don't know even if there's a string attribute or not. Get value would have give us the string value. We get the type and push it to the R types that we defined here, right? And then, um, we create a function type from that, like has these all uh, argument types that we just created and returns on the i64 type. Again, since we support only one type at the moment, it's easy to tell what type we have to return here. Otherwise we had to check for uh, the return types uh, somehow. And finally we create the function operation just like before. Uh, again, I don't have to do this, so I remove it. Ooh. So here we create the uh, entry block, right? Um, entry block. <laughs> I have a bad habit whenever I, I can't pronounce something, I make some noise. I, I was about to do that. <laughs> so add entry block actually creates a block and return a pointer to it, right? So here, if I do this, it would be better right oops sorry yes so and then we ask the rewriter to start uh, writing on the uh, beginning of the entry block we just like before we create a new constant int operation i hard coded number three here because the reason is, 
since I don't want to actually walk the function body and I start uh, like generating the code for I don't know whatever is in that function body function body I just hard coded num uh, something like a integer here this is absolutely wrong I know but for the sake of our goal which is to have a minimal version of our compiler this is fine I don't care what the function does at the moment. I just want a function that returns the value I, so I can compile it to uh, object code. If I can't get this thing wrong, uh, right, and if I can make it work right now, I I would definitely, uh, I, I'll fail at like generating the body as it is, right? So this is the simplest thing that a function can do, just return an, uh, uh, sorry return some value as number three so whatever function that we de define in the string code it doesn't matter it's always will return number three um, it is so like i know it's really stupid but there, as i mentioned i don't care about the body yet that's not our goal for the minimal compiler we want something to be able to compile some string code as simple as possible this is the most simple thing that we can we can do so bear with me i know it's hard to tolerate believe me I, uh, we're on the same boat but soon enough we're going to see some better stuff here but what we have to do uh since we get, got here already when we get uh, like here we have to get the body of the function here as well so here we have to do like give me operation body the body has to be a, like a, a several operation on its own because when we wanted to generate the function the slir for the function we walk the body and we generated operations there so we get the body here and basically we have to insert them in the where is it in the entry block so our entry block has to contain everything that is in the body of the function instead of doing this right and we, uh, the tricky part is that we have to figure uh, figure out what is the actual return value of that body so we have to find the leaf nodes and do some uh, stuff there that's why i didn't want to go through a rabbit hole for now and just use the simple uh, constant return here like before, if it was a public function, we leave it. Otherwise, we set it at private and we remove the original operations. That's it for uh, that's it for um, our first pass, right? I'm going to uh, show you everything at the end. So this is the new. Uh, like command line interface for the for uh, the steering compiler for now i changed it a little bit i want to show you how it works like how our pass works so it's it's really simple the b uh dash b argument is like where's the build function a uh, build, build directory i'm saying i'm telling it that uh, current directory is fine the dash l uh, uh, parameter is a load pass so it's like as i mentioned uh, like in previous episode the build uh, the build unit of string would be namespaces so we compile namespaces into object files uh it's like a c file or cpp file for c++ uh, but our unit of compilation would be a namespace so uh, with dash l parameter i would provide some passes uh, like paths to the compiler saying that whenever you want to look up a uh, namespace looking uh, look into these directories so uh, right now i'm asking the certain compiler to compile the namespace docs.examples.hello world for me and i want it to look into the home page like sorry home directory and the current directory what it does it's basically is to look for a docs directory and then looks for examples directory and try to find the hello underline word dot srn 
compile and then i'm asking the string compiler to just emit slir this emit here is going to change in the future it's just a debug thing for now and when i do uh, like emit slir basically uh, i'm not invoking any pass management so when i do this you'll get the slir uh, ge the generated slir here but if I do MLIR, I set the compilation phase to MLIR. So, oops, sorry. I'm uh, on my keyboard on some keys I use like high, like really sensitive uh, um, keys. So even a little bit of pressure would like activate the switch. Um, so if I do MLIR, it actually, it runs the pass that we just uh, reviewed and generate, transform this uh, SLIR here to this MLIR to, yeah, MLIR, which is basically a standard dialect. As you can see, we generated a function called main out of this function here, the name is main. Yep, no input, it returns I64, a constant and the return operation. Another one called main one. Uh, this one has several uh, inputs. By the way, I intentionally, as you remember in episode nine, I intentionally set the printer to print the locations. I have to, like, it's nice to know the locations for debugging, but in the real world, we don't need that because it's all, everything is in memory. Anyway, so main one out of the main one function in here there here's the input and like the visibility uh pretty simple right and finally we can ask generate lir for me we're going to look at it just now uh this episode got really long but anyway um it generates some uh so basically when we ask a uh, string compiler to generate lir we set the com compilation phase phase to lir so we added we add another pass to translate the standard dialect which is here to llvm dialect this one right quite uh, similar but as you can see the dialect is llvm here llvm constant blah 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 uh, in the next episode, we're going to see how we can generate LLVM IR out of this. But let's have a look at the other pass. There's another file called uh, to LLVM dialect. Where is it? Yeah, to LLVM dialect. This is, it's quite simple. As you can see, it's not that big. And it's quite similar to what we had in the previous pass. As you can see, it's just a pass that operates on module operations. We have to register the dependencies. In our case, is LLVM dialect. So our target would be LLVM dialect. Our source would be a standard dialect. And finally, on run on operation, uh, we create a target of conversion. We mark MLIR module operation as a legal operation, which means if we didn't translate this thing to a target operation, uh, is like this is fine, continue. And we create a type converter. Again, this um, the whole pass is based of uh, based off of MLIR tutorial. So since we don't have any type doesn't do anything for us but this is how we create a type converter if we create a type in the future that's how we actually create a converter for it to map to another type in the target dialect and finally we create our patterns just like before the only difference here is this function here so this is a built-in function in mlir called populate std to llvm uh yeah llvm conversion pattern what it does is basically we give it a type converter that we just created and the return pat uh, sorry rewrite pattern set that we created here both are empty we pass it to this function and what it does is to do the same thing that we did in the previous uh pass 
it's just do the same it just does the same thing for all the operation in std they're like sorry it just uh go over all the operations in the standard direct and it like transform them into llvm lower them into llvm dialect it adds all the rewrite patterns to the patterns and type converters to the type converter here um and finally we get the module and this time we do a full conversion we want everything to be converted to llvm uh, dialect we pass the patterns the target the module if anything fails oh i hate this thing if anything fails signal a failure pass failure otherwise we're grand let's move forward and here is the function that we use to generate the pass like before creates a unique pointer and returns it so again if you look at the terminal and run lir here we see that it actually generates llvm dialect based uh, out of that uh, standard dialect it's it's quite similar but the, the only difference is all the other dialects in MLIR know like built-in dialects. They know how to transform or tr translate themselves either to another dialect or to LLVM dialect. So LLVM dialect acts as like the leaf dialect for, uh, for all other dialects. Everyone try to translate into LLVM dialect and LLVM dialect itself knows how to translate itself to LLVM IR. So based like as far as I know, we don't have to, we never uh, have to actually translate anything directly to LLVM IR. We always use LLVM dialect um, and it, we use some other function that I'm going to show you in the next episode to translate the, LLVM dialect into LLVM IR. And to see the actual LLVM IR of uh, this dialect here, we can emit IR and here is the actual LLVM IR. In the next episode, uh, we're going to go through the code that generates this IR in here. We have to know uh, a little bit of uh, about uh, some of the details in LLVM. I, I don't know whether we end up generating uh, object files in the next episode or not, but we'll see. This one was a long one. Um, thank you to, to Grant, basically. Um, if you like what I do, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in um, working on this compiler with me, just send me a message. We can... Uh, I can talk to you and like figure out what would be a good idea for you to focus on. Um, have a great time and see you in the next episode.